So, Julian Siebert is a Munich-based tattoo artist who I follow on Instagram. He recently posted a video of a spectacular back piece he did on a fellow tattoo artist named Haley Poos. It's a cat skull Grim Reaper. I thought this artwork was really interesting, and I thought it would be fun to make a project inspired by it. So I'm starting this project with quarter inch veg tanned leather and a pattern that I've never sewn before. Over the years, I've used and spent a lot of time sharpening many expensive leather working knives, but recently I started using this. It's just a basic surgical scalpel. I gotta say, I think I found my knife. It's dangerously sharp out of the box. And if it ever does get dull, I could just replace the blade. No more wasted time sharpening knives. I find leather working just so relaxing. If you're looking for a new hobby that's good for your mental health, you should really consider it. There's just like a zen quality to leather working. It's just so relaxing and satisfying. Like take this process here, for example. This is an edge beveler. I could do this all day long. It is just so satisfying. This is only, I think, the second bag I've ever made. I really mostly make sneakers. Right here, I'm cutting the hole for where the closure hardware is gonna go. You know, one of the good things about leatherworking is that it requires so little to get started. All you really need is a good knife, some needle and thread, and a pricking iron. It's funny, this pricking iron that you see here, I found it on the subway, and that's actually what got me into leatherworking. So here I'm drawing the artwork on the leather. I started off using pens, but when I, by the time I was done, I had thrown everything at this. I used markers, paint, dye, pastels, really anything I had. Veg tan leather is really great for painting. Um, I don't think chrome tan leather or any coated leathers are really appropriate. Veg tan leather just soaks up the pigment really well. So here I'm going to emboss the leather. This is a technique I came up with as an alternative to traditional leather tooling. Traditionally, uh, leather is tooled with a hammer and die to create an impression in the leather. But uh, I wanted more freedom to have more of an illustrative effect. So I came up with a technique using, uh, but this, is, this is a dental tool. It's a reciprocating dental tool. And it basically does the same thing as traditional leather working where it hammers the leather. But this just gives me more freedom. You generally wet the leather. This only works on veg tan leather. And the, the idea is I, you want to push down the dark areas and raise the light areas to create a 3D effect. It's a fun process. And what I like about this is it is the freedom that it gives you. With traditional leather tooling, you're restricted to using a die of a specific shape or style. With this, whatever I can think of or whatever I can draw, I can emboss. I can do it on the fly and it just gives you more freedom. I like this technique better. So I decided to laser cut the side panels. The reason why I did this was because I'm not a bag maker. I've never sewn this pattern. I made this pattern. So with a laser cutter, I could also laser cut the holes and I thought I'd have a better chance of everything lining up. All right, so these side panels, the edges have to form a 90 degree angle and they have to stay in that shape. There's a couple ways to do that. I felt I could maybe use contact adhesive and some clips to get it there, but the right way to do it is using a die. Um, it's a process called wet molding. I've done it a few times making sneakers, but um, yeah, this is how you do it. It's I used a half inch Delrin. You could use acrylic or wood or really whatever you had. I laser cut it into a male and female. And the idea is you wet the leather and you basically sandwich it between the male and the female dye. You let it dry overnight. And hopefully if everything worked out properly, it uh, will permanently hold the shape afterwards. And as you can see here, everything seems to have worked out fine. Yeah, that'll do just fine. So these are the loops that are gonna hold on the straps. Normally I would use contact adhesive here, but I'm trying something new. This is a 3M double-sided permanent adhesive that's supposed to be really strong and a lot less messy. So I thought I'd give it a shot how it holds up in the long run, that remains to be seen. 
I definitely should have done the edge painting before I glued these. So now I'm going to stitch these onto the side panel. And I thought now would be a good time to ask any leatherworking YouTubers out there, do you have a process for filming your stitching sessions? <laughs> I just cannot stitch and film at the same time. I feel like the camera gets in the way and it's just impossible. My stitching comes out terrible or my filming comes out terrible. I just haven't come up with a way of doing it that works. Okay, so now I'm sewing on the side panels and I definitely should be using contact adhesive here. Normally I would, but I'm not a bag maker. I make sneakers. This is only like my second bag. And I also made the pattern. Wasn't sure if the pattern was gonna work. So I had uh, nightmares of having to rip this thing apart and I just didn't wanna do that. But luckily everything worked. And I attribute that to laser cutting the holes. Um, that I was able to line up all the holes because the stitch holes were laser cut, so that was good. All right, certain parts of this bag, there's a very obvious two layers of leather. I want to eliminate that so it just looks like one layer. And this is my way of doing it. I use one part gum rosin, one part white beeswax. I think you could use yellow beeswax too, that should be fine. I use a paraffin wax, in this case it's a crayon. Crayons are great because you could pick any color you want and a few drops of oil. In this case, I'm using olive oil, I believe. But any oil should work. What we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this up until it becomes melted and homogenous. And then I'm gonna pour this into a mold. I have a silicone mold here, but you could use anything. You could use a Dixie cup. And then we're gonna let it cool for about an hour. And then what we have is, a, is this puck and this thing is great. What you do is you, you rub this on your edges and it fills in the gap and it gives it the appearance of just one layer of leather. I'm gonna stick this in my stitching pony to get a better angle. And as you can see, that, 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 that seam line just disappears. And we just burnish it till it's flat and shiny and we're good to go. All right, so here I'm laser cutting the straps. You might notice this is a different laser than from before. I needed a much bigger laser. And luckily, I have one. And this laser has a conveyor belt. For those laser cutter guys out there, um, you might be jealous because this laser is awesome. Uh, I made a video about this, uh, this Skyver. It's an amazing tool. I got it from AliExpress, sight unseen, and I was just so happy I bought it. All right, here I'm cutting the slit for the hardware. I probably should use an oval-shaped punch, but I don't have one. Didn't come out as clean as I would have liked, but it, it'll do. All right, I'm going to attach the buckle using some rivets. All right, here's a tip for any new leather workers out there. Don't buy rivets from um, Amazon. They're complete garbage. Go out of your way to find good rivets from a professional leather working store. There is nothing, I mean nothing, more frustrating than working with shitty rivets. They will just make your life hell. They'll destroy your projects. Don't do it. This is the, the loop, the, the, the strap loop that I'm cutting here. I'm gonna sew this together. And I'm gonna slide it on and um, move it on. Okay, so I bought all my hardware from a store in the garment center, New York City's garment center called Botani. If you're a leather worker, this store is like Willy Wonka's factory. You go in there and they literally have every piece of hardware or leather working tool for any project in any color and any size. It's just great. All right, so I wanted to embellish the strap. I was thinking of studs since the artwork sort of has like a gothic or punk rocky kind of feel. I wanted to use maybe spikes, but then I had what I thought is a better idea. This is a 700 watt fiber laser. It's not an engraver, it's a cutter, but I found if you do a first pass on a low power, you can get sort of a pseudo engraving on it. And then what you do is you go over it a second time at full power, and then you cut your piece out. And that's sort of a, a cheat for getting uh, laser engraved elements out of a laser cutter. And it works. Um, they're, they come off the machine really rough, but they're easy to clean up. Yeah, I just hit them with some emery paper to get the rough edges and burrs off. And now I need to attach a back plate for attaching it to the leather. This is a process called sweat soldering. You apply some solder to the, your piece and then also to the back plate. 
All right, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to sandwich the two pieces together and then you heat it up a second time and it creates a permanent bond. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite ways to solder. Into some pickle and that's it. Now we just need to uh, clean this up, which is very easy. I have these 3M radial brushes. They come in a kit of all different grits. Uh, definitely a good investment for leather workers. These uh, clean them up a little bit on the bench uh, polisher and we're ready to go. And yeah, I think that looks good. I think that'll work. All right, so I'm gonna punch some holes for attaching the element to the strap. This is gonna get attached like any store-bought element. You just stick it through the holes and then you're gonna bend the prongs back and then you're gonna hammer it. I decided I would add some spikes as well. So let's punch some holes for those. It's basically gonna be spike, skull, spike, skull, spike, skull, like that. And by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but that's not a regular skull, that's a cat skull. I made a cat skull to match the cat skull in the artwork. I thought that would be kind of fun and it sort of goes together. That's why I made the custom element. All right, so we're gonna repeat that a few times and crack on. All right, so here I'm gonna attach the closure hardware. I also bought the closure hardware at Batani. If anyone's interested in shopping there, I could attach their info in the description. So there's a lot of different ways to edge paint, a lot of different tools. And the method I'm using here is a method that's very popular in Asia. It's where you use hemostats and a sponge. And I really like it. I recently started doing it and I definitely see now why it's so popular there. We're gonna attach these straps and we're pretty much done. <laughs> this brass is like a fingerprint magnet. It's terrible. So this is it. Hopefully I was able to showcase the beauty of leatherworking and maybe even encourage a few to take it up as a hobby themselves. The process of transforming raw materials into functional pieces I just find incredibly relaxing and satisfying. Aside from merely exercising your creative skills, it's also a powerful outlet for therapeutic self-expression. It requires very little to get started, but there's an endless amount of tools you could buy if you end up loving it as much as I do. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with this bag. I just saw the tattoo artwork and I thought it would be fun to build a project around it. Maybe I should send it to the tattoo owner, but I'm not sure if that would be weird or not. So what do you guys think the normal etiquette for something like this would be? Should I have gotten permission first before using the artwork? It's my understanding permission is generally required only if what you're making will be sold. But what do you guys think? Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next video. I have a couple of really cool projects in the works. All right, guys. Cheers.